like videos, Edison? Yes. Why, thank you, Edison. I'm glad you like my videos. I try my best. Hey, Edison, since you know who I am, what country do I live in? Uh, I wonder, I the videos, you are from the USA, but you have yeah. lived in Hiroshima of Japan nice. for a... Yeah, for a long time, Edison. 32 years now in Hiroshima, Japan. It's crazy. It's a really long time. Edison, most students know about Hiroshima because of the atomic bomb. Um, many of you know about that. So very good. Let's see. We have some other students. We have uh, Dan. Who is Dan? Mr. Dan. How are you, Dan? Is Dan there? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are you, Hello. Dan? Nice to meet you, Dan. How are you today? I'm good. Good, yeah. And uh, Dan, my name is Brendan McGowan. I am from the USA, but I live in Japan. I have lived in Japan a long time, many, many years. And it's really nice teaching you guys online because the students are really good in these classes. I really enjoy them. And then we have Miss Bella. Bella, try your microphone one more time. Can you try one more time for me? Is that okay, Bella? Can you say something? Hello, my name is Bella. Uh. <laughs> Bella, you have a great speaking voice. I really enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you for taking my class again. Hey, what happened to Mr. Doge, whose name before was Mr. Dippo? Doge. Yeah, how me. How are you? Me. Hey, you know what? Uh, Let me check oh, it. I'm fine. I'm good. Now, that boy who you used to get in fights with, I don't know, is he here? I don't think he's here. So, Dippo, yeah. you're safe. You're safe, Dippo. <laughs> All right. I hope that scumbag doesn't oh, oh, don't that scum again. Okay. languages. Because in the debate class, he really, he was against Roblox. And I think many of the boys in this group, Doge, like Roblox. So you're in a good class now. You don't have to worry about that, right? Roblox. Let's ask. Let's ask one student. Vincent, do you like Roblox? Yes. Yeah. There you go, Doge. We have a Roblox person. Um, in the last debate class in summer, one boy would always challenge Dippo about Roblox, and it would make Mr. Dippo, whose name is Doge now from Japanese manga, would get very angry with him. But I think you'll be peaceful now, Doge. I hope. <laughs> All right. How about On? How are you? The How are you doing, On? I'm great, thanks. But on, um, did you take my class before? Because there was like three ons. Um, this is my first time. Oh, okay. So yeah, there was an on uh, in the summer class. So I was wondering, how are you today, on? I'm great. How about you? Doing well. In Japan, near my house, we have to do what's called community gardening. And that's when myself and the cool guy next door and then these two old ladies, not old ladies, but retired ladies, like 80 years old, we have to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and clean the garden once a month. So on, I got bit by a mosquito. So I keep doing this. I'm scratching my leg because I got bit by a mosquito this morning. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I really hate mosquitoes. On, do you have mosquito problems where you are in Vietnam? Uh, there are a store coming to us our country yeah. and their many schools are shut down yeah so is it are those the dangerous mosquitoes that have the disease yeah though they have the uh, dang fever that one's bad but the mosquitoes bite you and they make you sleepy and high fever all right hey do we have uh mia mia are you here we have clove history what a great name ms nyok clove is a spice clove history uh, Mia, does your family use cloves in their cooking? Do you like cloves, Mia? This is an interesting name. Mia, clove history. <laughs> what is that, Mia? Mia, are you there? Mia, no? All right. How about Lucy? Lucy, are you here? Yes. Lucy, how are you, Lucy? Not Hey, Lucy, I can only see your hair. It's the mysterious Lucy hair. <laughs> can, you, can you adjust that so I can see your eyes, Lucy? Because we have this uh, mysterious Lucy. So All right, well, stand up for just a second so you can say hello to everyone. Ready? Here we go. Here's Lucy and her eyes and her happy, smiling face. Lucy! 
Yeah. Hello, Susie. Nice to see you again. Did you have a good summer vacation? Yeah. Yeah, what did you I do? I went to Japan and Taiwan. Oh, you went to Japan and Taiwan? Yeah. Is it Taiwan or Thailand? Thailand. Oh, Thailand. Did you get a suntan in Thailand from the beach or in the marketplace? Yeah. Yeah, strong sun. Do you like Thai food, uh, Lucy? Not really. Not really, huh? How about the Japanese food? Do you like that? Uh, so very amazing and different. Sashimi sushi. Sashimi sushi. <laughs> very funny. Doge, did you say hisashi booty sushi? No, no, no. Uh -oh. I mean sashimi and sushi. Yeah, well, sashi, sashi buri means long time no see. So that's kind of funny. Long time no see, sashi buri. Did you guys know in English we say long time no see when you see an old friend? But that actually comes from Hong Kong. The British were uh, in contact with the Southern Chinese in Canton. And they, in Cantonese, long time no see is actually a Chinese phrase that the British brought into English like 150 years ago. That's kind of cool, you guys. In um, Doge, in Vietnamese, do you say long time no see? Lâu không gặp. Yeah, so you you know you have that direct Hong Kong Southern China thing. So long time no see. So it's funny Americans and British and Canadian people didn't used to say that, but when we had contact with Asia, uh, Japan says hisashi buri, and Hong Kong is something else, and Vietnam. Kind of cool, Doge, huh? Uh, let's see. We have Mr. Tom. Are you there, Tom? Yes. How are you, Tom? Tom, you're floating around. Are you in space? Are you in the International Space Station? No, <laughs> just getting a cup of water. Hey, Tom, did you, were you in yesterday's class? Um, yes. Yeah, nice work in that class, by the way. Thank you so much. You try so hard. So it's nice to see you, Mr. Tom. And uh, let's see, who else do we have? Stella is my co-host. Stella, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Stella, today would you like to try a breakout room in about 20 minutes and maybe you and Doge can lead it because Doge is like a powerful, confident secondary student and you're a powerful, confident primary student. Would you guys like to lead a breakout room? Okay, I think okay. so. Sorry, sorry, Brandon, who else? Hello, we have Stella. Stella, and, yeah. Stella and who else will be co-host? Can you remind me again? Yeah, I'm a um, Stella and me are co-hosts, but also uh, Mr. Doge is a company. Doge, uh, is it the, uh, the what they call, yeah, I think, D-O-G-E, -D yeah? And yeah. who else? Doge. Mia? Uh, would Mia like to try? I can't find I don't Mia. see Mia in the list. Yeah, I see. Um, What's the name? Khan Yoke Club History Mia, but I don't recognize that name. Who is oh, the... all right, Mia. May I recommend that you put me in front? Yeah. I couldn't find you. Yeah, me. All right, okay. Okay. All right, so, we'll, we'll all right. Try, I can... We'll try the breakout room so the students can debate more. Um, and um, I talked to Stella yesterday. She's really confident, and Doge is also mm -hmm. really a, a great student. So you guys can really lead a breakout room like three or four other students today so you get a chance to discuss and debate all right i think we can do that because remember you guys if you're in the breakout room please talk don't become shy and not talk to people doge and stella will make sure that you talk to each other and debate the topic this way everybody gets a chance to share their ideas because we have about 12 students in this class okay so um, you guys, I prepared a presentation for you. Let me see. Uh, my mic and camera are broken, said uh, Clove History. All right. Clove, if you, uh, or Mia, if you want to just join Doge and Stella in the breakout room, you could send messages. That's fine. And um, let's see. Did I get one? Thanks. Vincent said, hello, everyone. I will join you in just a minute. Vincent, is your microphone working okay now? Check it there. Is it good? Yes, you. Yes. Yeah, okay, just checking. And um, Vincent, behind you is Singapore Airlines. Do you like Singapore? I'm from Singapore. Oh, you're from Singapore, so you're living there now, right? Yeah, I love Singapore, Vincent. It's one of my favorite cities. I've been there five times, and each time I like to stay three or five days. I love to eat Indian curry in the Indian village. 
Uh, but I also like Singapore sweets. But Vincent, my Japanese doctor said no more sweets. So I can't eat those delicious Singapore sweets, which is my favorite thing is to sit in a Singapore cafe and eat sweets and drink tea or coffee. Now I can only have the tea or coffee, Vincent. So, all right. You guys, here's the uh, thing I made for you today. Um, if I can find it, one moment, please. I prepared today's lesson. But at the beginning, at the very beginning of today's lesson, I uh, put a little personal information so you can see if this is correct. No, that's not correct. One moment. That's another lesson. And there we go. Hey, Doge, are you there? Mr. Doge, are you okay? Doge, you're not answering. What happened to our Doge? Okay, so here we go. All right, everybody. Here's Brendan's presentation. Uh, debate level two, Sundays, 9.30 to 10.30. Um, my name is Brendan McGowan. I am from the USA, but I have lived in Japan for many years, 32 years, you guys. My hometown is Chicago, Illinois. Here's Chicago on a map of America. So this state is called Illinois because the Indian people, the original people were called the Illini, and the French came down in canoes from these lakes down the river. They met them, and so French is Illinois, are the people of Illinois, but the Americans call it Illinois. All right, so there's Chicago. And I really like my city in summer. It's just so beautiful in summer with the lake and all these nice buildings and restaurants. But you guys, in January, it's a terrible place. Look at all that ice. The ice completely covers the lake. Remember in this lake that I showed you, this very big, beautiful lake is called Lake Michigan here. It's one of the five great lakes but it becomes completely icy in winter. So let me ask you the question, Edison and Doge and Vincent and Lucy and Tom and uh, Stella, do any of you have a cousin or brother, sister, uncle or aunt who lives in America, Canada, Australia, uh, a different place like that, China, France, Germany? Does anyone have a cousin or somebody who lives in a place like I that? I have a brother live in Australia. Those your brothers in Australia? Uh, I just have like an aunt in um, uh, in Florida in, uh, in USA. Yeah, I oh, have. Oh, oh, Florida's a great place, you know. That's like Vietnam's weather. In, I know. In, in winter, right? My mother and father were here in Chicago. After sixty years in Chicago, they got so tired of it. They moved to Florida. So I could go to Florida for two weeks in the winter and escape Chicago because you guys, this is so cold. It's like minus 20 degrees Celsius. And it's so cold, your ears can get damaged and your nose can get damaged. My friend from California got a damaged nose just from being in the airport in Chicago and going outside to get a taxi. His nose opened up and there was a little blood on it. So he had to go to the hospital. Uh, teacher. Yes, Tom. Um. I oh I I hadn't got a, a relative or anyone living in some faraway country except all everyone in my family lives in Hanoi. In Hanoi, um, hey, Tom. Almost, how, almost. How is um, Hanoi after the typhoon? How is Hanoi? Are you okay? You and your family okay? Yes, yeah, some trees broken down. Broken down. What was broken down, Tom? Trees, a bunch of trees in Taiwan. Now, do you let the government clean that up or the neighborhood people help clean it up? Um, I don't it? know. I don't know. Because in Japan, they say don't clean it up yourself. It's dangerous. But sometimes it's blocking the city streets. So the neighborhood people go out and cut the trees that blow down in the typhoon. So Typhoon Yagi, it was pretty bad. Tom, did it injure anybody? I mean, was anybody killed by that typhoon? No. No? no? Okay, that's good. Everyone that's good. stayed at home. Yeah, it's a good idea to stay home in a typhoon. All right. I have some questions for you guys. Uh, what is your hometown? So, Tom, is Hanoi your hometown? Yes. Yeah? And were you born there then? That means you were born there. Yes, I, um, I was born there. Okay. So you're a Hanoi person. I'm a Chicago person. That's very similar. Vincent Lowe, you are in Singapore now. Were you born in Singapore? Yes, I am a Singaporean so you are Singaporean. That's really cool. I like that, Vincent. Nice, nice. Hey, Lucy, 
You are from Ho Chi Minh City. Is Ho Chi Minh City your hometown? No. It's, it's oh yeah. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah. Is I that far, is it far from Ho Chi Minh City? Like fifty kilometers, one hundred kilometers? Um I okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey Doge, do you know in Japanese kilometers? is kilometers, so I don't know how you pronounce it in Vietnam, kilometers. Hey, Doge, what's your hometown? Doge, what happened to our Doge? Doge is not answering. Doge, are you playing computer games? <laughs> Where is the Doge? Doge. Me. Okay. Where are you? You disappeared. Hey, Doge, what's your hometown? Um, My hometown is Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah, okay. And and where do you live now? In Ho Chi Minh City? Yeah. Okay. I'm just checking everyone's hometown. Let's check with Bella. Bella, what's your hometown? My hometown is at Dalat. It's Dalat, yeah. I just read about Dalat in a book. That's wonderful. Nice. Hey, Don, Dan, what's your hometown? Uh, my hometown is in Guanbin. Uh, how do you say? Guanbin. Guanbin. Uh, Oh, I don't know. Can you spell it? Uh, Q U A N G. Quang. B I N H. Quang Bin. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Good spelling, Quang Bin. Okay, I'll have to find it on a map. I don't know it. Very good. I'm you... born in Japan. Oh, you were born in Japan, Dan. What city, Dan? Uh, Saitama. Oh, Saitama. Saitama? Saitama. Saitama. Yes. Saitama. I went to Saitama once. Um, 18 years ago, Dad, I went to Saitama City. Um, I lived it, I, I lived in Japan two years. Yeah. So, you know, Saitama was hit pretty bad by the tsunami about 13 mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. Big tsunami thing. All right. Thanks, Dan. How about Tin? Tin Tree. I'm sorry I didn't say hello to you. How are you, Tin? Um, I'm fine. All right, so Tin, you're a secondary school student. Yeah. Yeah, and so thank you for joining our debate group. Um, Tin, what's your hometown? Um, I was born in like Ho Chi Minh City. Hmm. Where do you live now? I live. I still live in Ho Chi Minh City. Okay, so you're similar to uh, Tom, born in Hanoi, his whole life in Hanoi. I ask that question because a lot of families move to another city because. Vietnam's economy is so strong, they go for a business opportunity in another city. How about uh, Edison? Edison, what's your hometown? My hometown is in Hanoi. Oh, it is Hanoi. And so you are a Hanoi person, so is Tom. Uh, Edison, how was the typhoon? Was it kind of scary yesterday? Yes, it was lots of, uh, lots of cars and motorbikes were lit up and the uh, and uh, many, there was a totally mess down at the <laughs> mess, yeah. field. And Did my that... school, my yeah. school has crashed down some tree pots. Oh my gosh. Will there be school tomorrow, Edison, on Monday morning? Monday. Yeah. Monday morning tomorrow, will you have school? Or is it not safe? Uh, they had a uh, film. They will clean up a... Uh, the other afternoon on Sunday, uh, so okay. on yeah. Monday I can be back to school. Oh, okay, yeah, because trees can be dangerous if they're at a school place like that. They fall down, and students shouldn't play near them, actually. Okay, now you guys, this is a really important question for today's debate topic. What do you like to do on weekends? It's an important question because today we're going to talk about school classes that you really like, that are fun and interesting, right? So, Edison, what's a What's a fun class for you? So can you think, Edison, what's a fun class for you? What class do you really like? I like English and math class. Nice. Now, um, do you know some students like PE class or uh, musical instrument? Edison, do you play a musical instrument? I don't really play, but I only know a few songs uh -huh. uh, on a piano. I can okay. oh, play the piano. piano, but I'm not an advanced. I'm just a beginner. Do you enjoy playing the piano? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the reason I ask these questions is because in America, in secondary school or high school, they have all these different classes like art class and uh, music classes or acting drama classes. And these are called optional classes. Um, you don't have, you, you have to take them, but you can choose whatever you want. But math and science and English and uh, social studies, those are what are called mandatory classes, classes that you have to take. So I put this in a little Vietnamese here for you. Uh, let's see. I, uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, yeah, this is, here are some ideas on optional courses versus mandatory classes that students from last summer's class suggested. So I put this in Vietnamese for you because it's a little bit difficult to understand. There are optional classes where you have a choice and mandatory means you must take it. So science and math are mandatory classes, but fun classes are called optional classes. So we're gonna talk about this one class. It, should it be optional or mandatory? Should it be like your choice to take it or students must take it? So let's try. Bella, are you there? Is Miss Bella there? Hey, yes, Bella. Yes. You remember, you have a great reading voice. Can you read this for us today here? Fourth day, first debate topic. I would like to discuss the topic. Show students from primary yeah. school to secondary school learn a spell. Special. Special, special kind of math that teaches them about how to use the money wisely. Yeah. wisely. Mm -hmm. The type of math class would be short, maybe one month before summer vacation each year. Mm. The class would teach how to save, how to shop, Intelligent, yeah, to intelligent save reading. money. Yeah. How to make extra money if there is time, and how to help, how to but get money as an adult for things like reading and apartment, paying for a house, helping to pay for college thing. Etc. Yeah. So you guys, I use etc. in this class, and you should use it too. In Vietnam, the students always go dot dot dot. Don't do that in your writing. You know, you write etc. Etc. is the best way. Bella, thank you for your nice writing. It's good. Lo, do you like to read, Mr. Vincent? Lo, do you like to read? Yes. All right. Can you read this one here? There are one or two difficult words like affirmative and required, but try your best. In debate, the team that agrees with an idea is called affirmative team. We agree with the, these ideas of classes on how to manage money. Opening comments. Allow us to present our case for students being required to take a short course each year on how to manage their money, we think. Nice, Vincent, great reading. You're a good reader. So if you are on a team in a debate, usually there are three or four members in debate teams when you are in a debate contest or tournament. You have to start with the precise language, correct language. You can't just say, I think it's a good idea like you do in school. That's okay for an English class in school. But when you're in a debate, you have to start with, allow us to present our case for students being required to take a short course each year on how to manage their money. We think, and now here you guys, I use dot, 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 because that's okay, right? It means I'm going to start discussing this. Okay, so here's another way. Um, Vincent, you did such a great job. Can you read these two blue ones here? We are here today to advocate for a special math course that mm -hmm. teaches us everyday practical lessons on how to save budget and spend money on fun things. Let us begin by examining. Mm. It is our contention yes. that a unique course which teaches students how to use their money intelligently 
is a necessary part of our education. We feel this way because. Nice, Vincent. Really wonderful. You guys, advocate means we support. We give our energy. We think this is a really good idea. So we advocate for is a really good debate uh, word to use. Now listen, at the end of today's class, I'm going to copy this whole file in PDF and also in Microsoft Word, and I'm going to put it in Zalo so you can always find words like advocate, it is our contention. So save these files. You can always use these. So if you have a debate in your class at school, you can go back to this and you can write your debate responses in a really good way. Um, and then if you join a debate tournament, like in Ho Chi Minh City or Hanoi, then you can also, you, you should always use this kind of language, these kind of expressions, okay? Especially this one, we feel this way because, and then give reasons, 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 all right? Let's check with Tin Tree, are you there, Tin? Yeah. Tin, can you read the negative response here? I, <clears throat> if you do not think an idea is good, then you are on the you are on the negative team. Mm. You oppose something. You are the opposition team. You respond to the affirmative team using words such as "while we while we respect and understand your support for an extra class at school that teaches how to use money intelligently." We are. We disagree with the idea because something. Yeah, because something. Nice, Tim. Great reading also. So that's the negative team. Negative team doesn't mean you're a negative person or you're a bad person. It just means you don't agree with the idea. So you and your three team members respond to the affirmative team. Each team gets about four minutes to give their presentation. Then the negative team jumps up and gives their response. And it's always like four minutes, two minutes, four minutes. It's like table tennis back and forth using this style, all right? So uh, let me read this one. Really important note, one of our students in the debate classes has a lot of experience in debate. And she told me yesterday that her in her style of debate at NCSN, this is where we are studying online, one of the most important things to start with is to define all the things you are going to talk about, all the new vocabulary words. This is what it might sound like. Hey, Dan, would you like to read this here? Okay. First, we must, we must ask the question, what exactly is budget? Well, according to Google, definition and Bugat is. You could um, say Vietnamese is like a Yang Zak, is it? Budget. No, that? Yeah, budget. And in English, the formal definition is an esti estimate of income and expenditure yeah. for a set period of time. Yeah. Pocket money is the money your mom and, and dad may give you to buy small things each day, like snacks, toy, or school supplies. Yeah. Dan, do um, students in Vietnam get some pocket money from their mom or dad to buy snacks or things for school? Um, I don't know. <laughs> like they give you a few dong. Hey, Tom. Do you get pocket money in Vietnam to buy things for school, like snacks or a notebook or a pencil? I never did. Like each, uh, like each, yeah. each, uh, each family. Each family has a different yeah. style. In yeah. some families in America, you have to do some housework. Your mom and dad say, did you clean your room? If you clean your room, I'll give you $5. And then the boy has $5 to do whatever, buy candy or buy manga or something like that. Hey, Edison, do you get pocket money from your mom or dad? No, my mom and dad never. <laughs> they never give you money. Okay, that's fine, Edison. How about Tom? Do you get some pocket money? Mom and dad never gave me pocket money. Oh, okay, so in uh, Vietnam, they, you don't really they, do that. They say that, uh, they say that when I grow up, I need to find money on my own, and they will never give me a single oh. dollar. Oh, so they're trying to teach you a lesson, like you really have to be careful with money, Edison? Ah, oh, that's yes. like, yeah. So that's like family education on how to spend money wisely. So that's what's really interesting. 
and my family said that I I am not allowed to use money on my own because I oh. don't have the strategies yeah. to use them. So, Tom, at about age 10, 11, 12 in Japan, they give the primary students about 1,000 yen a week. But they, um, they, they're told they can buy snacks with it or things for school, but don't buy manga, you know, don't buy stickers, don't buy foolish things, don't buy candy, buy a healthy snack, right? So they're pretty strict with that 1,000 yen, which is about seven US dollars. They said, be careful, spend $1 each day, right? Okay, very interesting, you guys. Um, by the way, here's this big word. Tom, what is expenditure in Vietnamese? I put this. Is it she fee? How do you say that? She fee. She fee. Do you know that word? Expenditure. It's what you spend your money on. Expenditures. What do you spend your money on? Expenditure. Hey, Tom, would you like to read this here? Okay. You might also call the special course in math consumer education. It as it is known in America, you should you could start your debate with what exactly is consumer education in America. Consumer education is the, a type of education to guide consumers to acquire knowledge and skills and link them to a create behavior for safe consumer life. Additionally, you could describe consumer education as the preparation of an individual to tap capable. capable of making informed decisions when it comes to purchasing products in a consumer's culture. Yeah, that's kind of difficult English. So yeah, read that in Vietnamese. cho học sinh trẻ để họ có thể đưa ra những quyết định định hướng đắn khi mua sắm. Hey Tom, do you think that's good Vietnamese? Does that make sense or does that sound strange? Because that's Chat GPT that did the translation for me. Does that sound okay? okay? I, I yeah, it is okay. Okay, it doesn't sound weird. I have to check with you guys on things like that. So that's what consumer education is, teaching you guys to spend your money intelligently. All right, and we'll skip that note here. Okay, so um, let's go to this one. Here are some ideas on optional courses versus mandatory classes that students from last summer's class suggested. And uh, let's go to who needs a chance to read again. I want some new person. Hey, Lucy, are you there? Yes. Lucy, of course. Lucy, can you read uh, all of this, please? Okay. Here are some ideas on optional. Discuss yeah. various mandatory mm -hmm. class that students from last summer class suggested. Yeah. Student B, great idea, but the problem is if the student or interested is talking the class. Mandatory or demand. You have to check your code. B E. You have to take B E in class every day. Or every day for as class and building I should be demand for school in your country to get your student at less world customer education those approaches is an overseas school. Student can learn on some time during the day or on weekend. At least it's because you have a power to pick because that's your large energy. Really important because it's written and playing music and we learn funny time. We make our own sound. Student B. I would like to take a little because just for fun as basketball and badminton. Yeah, so those are elective is a fun free course. Mandatory means you must take it. So the consumer education at my secondary school, you had to take that course. This is kind of fun here. Let's do this one here. Um, Tin, can you read this one here? Tin Tree, the student C to student W. Okay. <clears throat> uh, student C said that badminton, music, and ukulele are my favorite fun classes. Uh, 
Stephen Stephen B said, "I play basketball after classes, and I'm only one hundred forty six centimeter, but I'm a good player." Yeah. Stephen D, soccer or football. Stephen D plays defensive positions. Mm. Stephen W said, "I study basketball with a." A professional coach. He's a good coach. He's from Vietnam, and kids all from all over the city learn advanced basketball skills from him. Yeah, and then I'm um, sorry. There's one more tin. Can you read, Student okay. J? Um, <clears throat> Student J said, "I can travel to another school to learn basketball, and in this way, I can make new friends." Yeah, thanks, Tin. So now all of these extra courses are after school courses, so they're in the students' free time. So the students say these are usually more fun to do than math or science. But our focus today is on a class that you must take, which is the consumer education class. And that's right there, how to spend your money wisely. So what I want to do is to um, do our breakout room. And in the chat here, I'll put the question is, what is the question for everybody? And everyone in the meeting, the question is, should students start taking consumer education or how to spend your money intelligently in class, at school, or should their mom and dad teach this at home? Okay, so there it is. And I just put that in chat. Should students start taking consumer education or how to spend your money intelligently in classes at school? Or should your mom and dad teach you that by themselves? So that's your first debate topic. You can discuss it. Now, listen, you don't have to use the language of the debate like we support the idea. We'll start to do that in class number two, class number three. For today's class, I want um, the person to help us will be um, Stella. Let me check with Stella. Stella, how are you today? I'm great, thank you for asking. Stella, can you introduce yourself to our 11 other students? Everybody, this is Stella. Stella, how many debate classes have you taken? Well, quite a few, but I finished both of them already. Very good. Hey Stella, do you think you can lead a group of about four or five students, you and Mr. Doge? Maybe. All right, so let's try breakout rooms, you guys, and you can discuss this question for five or ten minutes. If nobody is talking, Stella, then it's okay. You can bring everybody back into the breakout rooms, all right? So okay. We'll, so I have to stay here in the main room. I'll keep four or five students in the main room to talk to, and you can um, pick people for in, um, in the breakout room. So, um, Stella, I'll put Bella in your room. And uh, Dan and Doge and Edison can go to your room. And then I'll work with uh, Lucy and Ann and Tom and Tree and Vincent. Okay, so let's open the rooms and I'll take students out of the rooms one by one to discuss. So remember, you guys, should you take a money education class in your school to start preparing you to, um, to uh, make a better money decisions when you're an adult? So I'm going to move Mel, Ms. Bella, Dan, Doge, Edison, Lucy. I'm going to move Lucy to the main session. And I'm going to move Tom to the main session and Trin to the main session and Mr. Vincent Lowe to the main session. All right. So Lucy, you're back here with me. And that's cool. Let's go with on. Move on back to the main session. And this way, Stella has some students to work with in her room. Now in the breakout room, sometimes the students get shy, but the students should really talk to Stella as much as they uh, why, why did I get, why, did so, I, why was I took back to here? Um, do you want to stay here or do you want to go in the breakout uh, room? No, nah, I think it's fine, it's fine. All right, it's fine. So help us lead the discussion. Do, do you think this is a good idea to tell students to take a class that they must take? It's called a mandatory class. Wait, what? What? Well, you were in secondary school, so yeah. you, you study math and science and English, but what if they had one class, and it's only about six weeks class, maybe it starts in May and it finishes in June, where you learn about how to spend money. Would that be interesting for you? 
Wait, hold on. It's mandatory, right? Yeah, like, you have to take it. I need it. to take it. Yeah, you need to take it. I mean, I already know how to like use my money wisely oh, and okay. like spend it all or something. Yeah. See, now I have to, to be honest, that. like if yeah. I could be able to learn about making more money or more income yes. Yes. at my age, it would be yeah. interesting. See, now the class I had to take, the mandatory class, um, to in, in high school, I was 16 and 17 years old. The teacher said, I know you guys already know how to spend your money because your mothers and fathers own small businesses. You're really good at that. This guy was funny. He had a mustache. His name was Stark, Ken Stark. I still remember his name. But he said, I owned a small business and I want you guys to learn how to make money. So like the second half of the course, the final month, he was showing us how to do investments and stuff. And that was really cool to it, like how to find. So he had us put our money into the American Stock Exchange. And I put my money, it was imaginary money. We didn't use real money. And I put it in Coca-Cola company. And in like two months, my Coca-Cola actually went really high because Coca-Cola introduced a, a new thing called uh, no sugar Coke. It was like chemicals, no sugar. And it did really well. So for my class project, my teacher was really happy. He said, Brendan was one of the top money making students, right? He says, I wish you really could have put like $10,000 in Coca-Cola because uh, Tin, I would have made $15,000 in three months if wow. I had the money. Yeah. So that was a cool course. So it's like you said, how to make more money, you'd be interested in that. Yeah. Hey, Lucy, are you a good spender of money? Do you save money or spend money? Mm, I already spend money. <laughs> you like to spend it, right? What do you spend your money on? Uh, I spend in food because I love food. You, on food? Yeah. And so what do you buy? Do you buy it from the supermarket or from the people who sell it in small restaurants in Vietnam? I buy in a supermarket. Yeah, so what do you buy? Healthy food or sweets, Lucy? A sweet food. That's yeah. so yummy. <laughs> now, does, do your mom and dad give you the money or do you just put it in your mom's basket at the supermarket? Uh, my mom and dad give me a money. And oh, she so gave me money. Because remember Tom and Edison said, no, we don't get money directly. Like, uh, So they actually give you the money directly, Lucy? Hmm. In my school, I already talked about this, so my dad yeah. and my mom. Yeah. So, Lucy, do you spend the money intelligently? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right. So, Lucy, behind you, you have a beautiful painting on the wall. Do you do artwork? Oh, yeah. Okay, so do you spend some money on art supplies like paints or pencils? Or watercolors? Yeah, it's so expensive. Yeah, I heard about that. That's really expensive. Because in July, I went to Kyoto, the beautiful city in Japan, and I met my old college friend. She got married to a kind of a hardworking, rich guy, an accountant. And they have a boy named Spencer. And Spencer is 11 or 12 years old. He likes to buy expensive art supplies. But my friend Denise said, I don't want to keep buying him these expensive paints and watercolors and pencils because he wants too much. So, Lucy, are, they're really expensive. Do you, does, yeah, so. yeah. Who do you, do you buy it yourself or do you ask your mom or dad or your grandmother to help you with it? Yeah, I asked my mom before I buy. Now, does she ever say, oh, it's too expensive, Lucy? Uh, no, she said, are you done to use like, uh, oh, you it? Really it's broken and you can buy it. Okay. It's nice artwork, Lucy. You must be a good painter. Nice, nice. Very good. Let's go back to Tom. Hey, Tom, you were the student who told us, nah, my mom and dad don't give me pocket money. They want me to learn how to... What was this story, Tom? Um, it's like... I mean, like, I cannot spend money... I, I don't have any money yet. Okay. So no. usually when and when anytime I have to go to the shops to yeah. buy buy groceries, my yeah. mom always sends me there with yeah. some pocket with some money. Uh -huh. She gave me it. Yeah. And that, no. and when I return home, I just give her did nothing. Now, Tom, you're a good boy. Do you ever buy Everything any was... buy any candy for yourself with the supermarket money? No, no. Oh. I always have enough. 
have to buy those things, so I didn't even know the I'm, I'm laughing because in high school we had this friend Jim, and, and Jim's mother was really old and she was a little bit crazy, and so she would give him money to buy things at the supermarket. And then Jim would say, well, what do you want, mom? And she'd say, one egg, one carrot, and one potato. And my friend Peter and I would laugh and laugh and laugh. We'd say, just one egg, one carrot, one potato? That's such a small list of things. And she would give Jim like $2, right? She was a little bit cheap, but she was having some kind of problem. She was actually couldn't think so well. She was a little bit crazy. So that's a joke we, we sometimes tell it like, 45 years later, um, we tell this, Tom, we tell this story like, hey, Jim, remember your mother's crazy shopping list with only three things on it, right? <laughs> okay. Let's go to uh, Mr. Vincent Lowe. Vincent, you live in this like great city, Singapore. Do you get some pocket money to buy some good stuff? <laughs> yes, but yeah. I do. Now, but I do. To get the pocket money, do you have to do some things like keep your bedroom clean, help with the kitchen? I mean, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's that's called an allowance. So it's like you have to earn a little bit of the money by doing a little bit of housework. So uh, Vincent, uh, if you have some pocket money, what do you buy? School things, snacks. I'll buy any food for my recess in school. Oh, that's nice. So in your school, you can bring some snacks for recess? Yeah. Ah, this is interesting because, Vincent, I asked the class yesterday. They were a new uh, group of students. And I think it was the writing class. Uh, Tom, you're in that writing class. Was the question I asked, um, should you have snack food during the um, during the day, maybe that was yesterday's debate class. Um, it was should students be allowed to eat snacks during the recess time? And Vincent, most of the boys and girls in the primary school said no, we can't eat snacks during the daytime or even in the break time. They can only eat a breakfast and a lunch at the school in Vietnam. Did you know that? Yeah, it sounded really strict. I was really surprised by that. The teacher said, when you eat your snacks, you don't pay attention. So the teacher said, please do not bring snacks. And then some of the students said the students secretly put it in their desk and they eat it during class. And the teacher will give you one warning only. If she says it's the second time, you have to go see the principal and the teacher gets really angry. So I don't know. That was yesterday's topic. Our topic today is a little bit different. So, because you're debate class too, I gave you the more challenging topic today. Okay. Hey, um, Vincent, in Singapore, do most kids get pocket money? Because in Japan, most primary students get a little bit of pocket money. We do. They do. All right. Now, do you have friends who buy things like Pokemon cards <laughs> with their pocket money? Uh, not with their pocket money. It's <laughs> like their parents give them like birthday money and then after that they like sometimes choose to spend yeah. it on Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. So. Did you know the problem in Japan is that adults are now are buying the Pokemon cards and they buy like 25 Pokemons and a boy with only a little pocket money can buy two cards packs because the adults want to find the really expensive cards. Do they do that in Singapore? Yes, my father. Oh, your brother or your father does that because the children say it's not fair. The people with a lot of money buy all the good cards, all those really expensive magical cards, right? Um, did your it's your brother Vincent who does that? No, my father. Oh, your father? Now, yeah, he now collects. My them. Living, now my living room is full of cards. Does he have any really expensive ones? What? Yes. Yeah. See, that's that's why you do it. It's like. See, that's what consumer education, what we're talking about today. Expenses, um, pocket bone cards really are what's called an investment. You can make money from them, right? So that's, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Vincent, does he sell them online or does he keep them? Sell them online. Well, some of the like really rare cards, he keep them 
for a few years later, and then the value will increase. Then, therefore, then he will sell the car. Yeah, see, my problem is, Vincent, I collected some really expensive guitars from the guitar shop in Japan because the old lady sold them for really cheap, but they're actually really expensive. But Vincent, I can't sell them online because I love these guitars too much. So that's my problem. I don't know how to let them go and make good money on them, Vincent. Hey, Tin, are you listening to this thing about Pokemon cards? Do any of your friends collect Pokemon cards to make money? I think they um they used to do, but not right now. Yeah. Did any of them lose money like they were spending too much on it? Probably like two of them. Yeah. So you see how like that's what consumer education, how to make a wise choice. You have to have the ability to say, I'm wasting too much money on this. I'm not making any money. And then you have to let go of that <laughs> that hobby. That becomes an expensive hobby. I hey, remember I like once they bought like 20 packs and 20 they, got packs? Not, they got nothing like nothing nothing right they, they got no money back wow in in vietnam 20 packs is that a lot of dong like a lot a lot no, i don't remember i don't remember the exact packs yeah. like the packs price or something but i remember that they were expensive Hey, um, to, to get that kind of money to buy 20 packs of Pokemon, do they get it from their mother or father or do they have to do some work to get that money? Well, like, they probably have to do some walks. Yeah. Because, like, in Vietnam, let's say your uncle owns a famous restaurant, then you have to go there on Saturday and do, like, four hours of work in the busy time to help him. Then you get the pocket money. It used to be like that in America, but then, like, my sister just buys everything for her daughter and I don't think it's a good idea. Remember Tom was saying in his family, they try to teach money is important, but my sister never learned that lesson. So she buys her daughter expensive clothes and she spends too much money. Her husband gets angry, right? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem for teenagers now. All right, you guys, let's close the room and check with Stella how the discussion was. Everybody will come back and we'll see what they did. Um, from this one, I really like the discussion with Vincent and Tim about those Pokemon cards. And Lucy about the art supplies was kind of cool too, because that sounds like my friend in Chicago. And we'll see Bella is back. Hey, Bella, how was your discussion room? Did you guys talk about stuff? <laughs> did you talk to your group leader, Stella, I hope? I talked a lot about questions. About what was it, Stella? About the topic, like I asked, like yeah. about your question about how they can save money and about how their parents can help them save money. About like nice. a lot. Nice, Stella. Did you get some good answers? Some good responses? Yes, lots of answers. Are uh, that they speak a lot too, so I'm happy about. It. Yeah, me too. I'm happy you guys were talking. Good. The reason I say that, Stella and the students, because some students became really quiet and shy. And they're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to give my answers. But you guys are wonderful. So thank you so much. We can do this every Sunday. We can have group discussion like this, right? Um, interesting answers in my group, Stella. We had um, Tin, Tin brought up, a, Tin 3 said, this class on learning to spend money is kind of interesting. But what would be more interesting is how to make more money. And I told them that in some of the high school classes in America, the class, the first half is how to spend money correctly, intelligently. The second half is actually how to make money, how to invest money. And a lot of the kids really like the second half of the uh, money class because they want to make money. Stella, did you have anyone who answered like that in your class? I asked them how to save your money more and earn it. Most of them said that they can do chores and a, a few of them said that they can, they said that they will do and have a good grade on the test and their, and their parents will help them take some money and earn money, like, yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Chores and uh, good test results as a result. So you guys, chores, you know that word, Stella used chores, C-H-O-R-E-S, housework, doing housework, chores. I'm really happy you guys know that one because I always have to teach that word in Japan. I say chores means you guys have to do housework. Hey, Tom, you raised your hand. Tom has a question. Um, I, every time 
time I see my brother when he was just like four years old. He didn't know how to go to the potties. But then I then suddenly I saw him one day doing something in the toilet and told him my mother gave him a deal that if he every every time he goes to the toilet, she would give him five dollars. Nice. That's actually really good. Um, and now he's carrying a gallon of water every time he's walking around. Is he a good toilet user now? Yes. Yeah, every time you just walk with a gallon of water. Yeah, that's really good. Tom, when I was when I was three years old, I was kind of a foolish boy. My sister left her apple snack for lunch on the kitchen table, and I just dropped it in the toilet, and I went like that to the toilet, and the toilet was like a fountain. And why I did that, I don't know, Tom, but my mom was really angry. She said, why would you do that? And I said, oh, the apple is my toy. It's like a submarine that goes down in the ocean. And she said, no, 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 no. So <laughs> that's kind of crazy like your brother. Hey, you guys, um, Tom, and if you check the chats, uh, I wrote working out agreements with mom and dad for good behavior. You get some reward, some money. Here's a really big word, you guys. I want you to see if you can do it. Incentive. It's there in the chats. Incentive. Incentive means you get a reward for doing something good. Incentives. And this is used a lot in business English. Incentive. It means to do good things and get money. Incentive. All right. All right. So uh, let me ask Mr. Doge. I want to see if Doge is still here. Doge, are you there? Mr. Doge, Mr. Dippo, are you there? Dippo, Doge. Doge, are you playing computer games? <laughs> are you playing Roblox Doge? Doge, 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 where are you? All right, we're going to have to figure out some way to get Doge. Tom, we're going to have to pay Doge to pay attention more in class. Hey, Edison, how are you? Mr. Edison. I'm good. Hey, Edison, in, you, in your house, do you get some money if you do really well on a test? They give you a little prize money? Yes, but only the hard test. Oh, on a hard test, not every test. So, Edison, what do you do with your money? I just pocket it. You just keep it in your pocket, all right? Do you do you save it or do you want to spend it on snacks or Pokemon cards or something? I don't, uh, I didn't spend it on anything. Oh, very cool. So you just like to have the money in your pocket? Yeah, I think that was fun enough. That is cool. I mean, it feels good to have a little power in your pocket and not spend the money. But Edison, do you go to a good school? Like some bad boy won't, won't try to steal your money? No. Okay, because some students say, my school is a little bit crazy, teacher Brendan, and I could never bring money to my school. So I was like surprised to hear that. They said some bad boy maybe would try to take it or something. Did you know that? Yeah, I was surprised. Okay, you guys, um, we have about four minutes left, so I'm going to give you a homework question. For our debate class, the homework is usually just making a one-minute or two-minute presentation with your voice with an MP4 file, MP4. And so let me uh, write that here for you. One moment, please. So we'll do the share screen, and here we go. So I'll put your homework um, in here. And here is the homework question. Now remember, just respond to this by speaking into a audio file, MP3, MP4. You can make a video if you want. Some students made a video and they showed their face doing a presentation. That was really cool too. But if it's difficult for you to do a video, you can just do a one or two minute audio file. You can ask your mom or your dad how to make one of those if you need some help. And the question I want you to ask is, um, um, let me see, we're talking about getting money for chores. And so let me see. Um, let's see, which do you think is a better um, way to give a money reward um, for doing housework or getting a good grade on an important test. Now, if you, um, good grade, exam? Is, good grade, exam? Equals, uh, 
good mark. Look, if you're in Australia oh. or Singapore, the British is called good yeah. marks on your test, right? So you guys use the word good marks on your test. And uh, test or exam, we'll say, because they use different words in different schools, you guys. So there's the question. Which do you think is a better way to give a money reward to a young person? for doing housework or getting a good grade on an important test or exam. Um, question two, should this be a lot of money <laughs> or a little money? For example. Teacher, yeah. can you send this on Zalo? Yeah, I'm going to definitely put this on Zalo. So I promise to always put the homework on Zalo so you can see it all. That way, I don't send the video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put the video on Zalo too in our Sunday debate group. You can make the video or the audio just speaking, you know, your choice. Now, listen, if you, you have a difficult time doing the audio or the video, you could write one paragraph of five sentences. And then in class next week, you can read it for everybody. That's kind of the emergency option. Like, I can't make a recording. I'm having difficulty with my microphone. Then type five sentences, like a basic paragraph, and say, I think this is a good idea because blah, 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 <laughs> right? And then send it to me, and I'll check the English. And then you can read it for everybody next week. But that's only if your microphone or your camera isn't working well, you guys. Um, Here's an example. For example, one of my students uh, got a big cash prize from one of the city uh, contests in chess. So we were really surprised he got like a really big cash. It was a lot of dong, right? Do you think that's a good idea, like give a big cash prize for playing chess? Because he's a really good chess player. And he was surprised. I think you guys, it was 50,000 dong he got. <laughs> Do you think that's a lot of money? Yeah. Bella, is that a lot of money, 50,000 dong? Yes, it is a lot. Yeah, because the boy is only like 10 or 11 years old. <laughs> Vincent said no. <laughs> 50,000 dong he got for being a chess champion. All right. Okay, you guys, what do you think, Vincent, in Singapore, what if they gave you like 200 Singapore dollars for a chess competition? Do you think that's good money? That's, that's very good money. Yeah, that's very good money. All right. All right, you guys, you did a wonderful job. Really, really good because nobody's shy, but it looks like Dan is ready to go. <laughs> You. We'll see you guys next week. Now, please check Zalo. Please check Zalo, and you will see this homework. I will copy this in to the homework, okay? So that's our question you should respond to today. Which do you think is a better way to give a money reward to a young person for doing housework or getting a good grade um, or good behavior is what uh, Tom said. His brother learned to use the toilet better. Um, on an important test, uh, getting a good, I'm not going to put that here, I'm going to put this, getting a good grade on an important test or exam or good behavior. Maybe, okay. you know, all right, you guys got to get going because you have busy Sundays, I remember. Sunday is a busy day for you. So let's finish class today and I will put everything you need in Zalo, all right? So thank you very much, Bye. Tom. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye, Lucy. Bye-bye, Tim. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Bella, thank you for helping. Bye-bye, Lucy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care, Edison. See everybody.